Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for today's call with Illinois Secretary Jerry Oleksiak. I'm Teresa Elliott, Deputy Communications Director for Illinois. Please submit your questions by clicking the chat icon, which is the blue thought <coughs> button at the bottom of your screen. Please include your name and media outlet, followed by your question. Any in interest of time will be limited to one question, but time permitting, we'll open up the call for a second round. You may submit any follow-up questions to us at dlipress at pa.gov, and we will address them after the call. For your awareness, this call is being recorded. If you do not consent to being recorded, please hang up now. Following the call, a link to the recording will be provided to the media outlets that participated. We'll get started with comments from Secretary Jerry Alexiak. Secretary? Thank you, Teresa, and uh, thank you to uh... All the media folks that have joined us, let me start by apologizing with some technical issues. I had to switch computers and uh, I think we're, we're good to go. So thank you for your patience. Uh, let me begin as I always do with some numbers for you. Since March 15th, we have paid more than $25 billion in uh, total unemployment compensation benefits, 4.9 from our traditional program, um, 15.7 from the federal and unemployment compensation program, the extra $600, which as you know, ended in July, and we'll have some updates on the program that has taken its place. Uh, 4.7 billion from the pandemic unemployment assistance program. That is the program that is for folks who traditionally do not get unemployment. Uh, and uh, the remainder of the dollars, 264 million, approximately million with them from the pandemic emergency unemployment compensation program and 50.3 million from Pennsylvania's extended benefits program. And that's what those last two programs are for extended benefits. Um, as far as customer service, we have, uh, our staff has worked almost 294,000 overtime hours throughout our unemployment compensation uh, bureau. And we've uh, responded to about one and a half million phone calls, emails, chats, and through our virtual assistant. As we say every week, these numbers are, are good numbers. We're very proud of them and proud of the work that's being done here at Labor and Industry. But uh, I know personally and our staff knows that these numbers don't mean anything if you're on the wrong side of those. So we still have work to do. Um, thus far, we've um, resolved, which means we have paid or uh, determined ineligible 97% of the claims from March 15th through the end of uh, June, so, uh, or July, I'm sorry, the end of July. So we are, are proud of that number, but again, we still have, have work to do and we will continue to do that. Let me give you a trust fund update. Um, the, as of uh, last Friday, the balance was about $344,000. That's what uh, we have on the US Treasury website. Um, and we have, uh, applied, as you know, for uh, the line of credit, the loan from the federal government, and we uh, will probably be uh, using that this month. Um, let me talk to you about the Lost Wages Assistance Program, the program that uh, we uh, fortunately were able to get uh, started a little earlier than we anticipated. So <clears throat> this past Friday, we announced that we had implemented the uh, program several weeks ahead of schedule. So that means that unemployment compensation claimants who apply and qualify for the federal lost wages assistance program will begin receiving the extra 300 weekly benefit as early as next week, September 14th. Under the federal guidelines for that program, only individuals who are fully or partially unemployed due to COVID may apply for this benefit. Uh, to qualify for the extra $300, the lost wages assistance program also requires that eligible Individuals must have a uh, benefit rate and dependence allowance totaling $100 or more per week in benefits. And they must receive a benefit payment for each week from one of the following qualifying programs. And that's regular UC, the Pandemic Emergency Unemployment Compensation Program, which is the extended benefits from the federal government, the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program, the non-traditional uh, program for non-traditional uh, people. Uh, applying for unemployment through the Pennsylvania Extended Benefits Program for the Shared Work or Short-Time Compensation Program and for the Trade Readjustment Allowances. Uh, individuals receiving benefits from these programs with the exception of uh, PUA and Shared Work 
will need to apply by certifying one time only that their unemployment is due to COVID-19. And that's the system that we have up and running now. Uh, pool claimants don't have to uh, reapply because they have certified already that they are unemployed due to COVID-19. And employers in a, a shared work program have already provided the necessary documentation for those employees. If you uh, need to certify that uh, COVID-19 is the reason for your unemployment or uh, lost work, uh, uc.pa.gov slash cert. That's uc.pa.gov slash cert. The payments will be made in one lump sum for claim weeks beginning August 1st. So it's retroactive to August 1st through August 29th. Uh, after that, we will uh, need to reapply for uh, those funds, and we've begun that process. Um, and uh, as I mentioned before, those dollars will last through at the end of December or until the $44 billion that was initially allotted is used up or until Congress and the president agree on a, a different kind of um, path for uh, supplementing unemployment benefits. Uh, I want to give you an update as we do each week on the PUA fraud. We continue to urge Pennsylvanians to remain vigilant and report all instances of unemployment and benefits fraud that they are aware of. We continue working closely with the U.S. Attorney's Office in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, the Pennsylvania Attorney General's Office, the PA Treasury, and other state and federal agencies to um, combat PUA fraud. Again, if you go to uc.pa.gov slash fraud, there are um, a lot of information there on the warning signs, what we uh, are encouraging people to do if they believe they have been victimized by this fraud and how they can return benefits they may have received uh, that they are not eligible for. The last thing I wanna mention, we have uh, continued our virtual town halls. We've done 15 of those so far with my uh, partner, Susan Dickinson, and we have another one Coming up this uh, Thursday, we would encourage uh, folks to go to access.live slash PA labor to be a part of that call. Or if they uh, want to call in, 833-380-0719. So that's uh, all that I have for me. Thank you for, uh, again, being part of this. And uh, I'll take whatever questions I can. And uh, any questions that would... Um, relate more specifically to policy, we will get those questions uh, from you and make sure that we get an answer for you uh, sometime today. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you so much for those comments, Secretary Alexiak. And again, I encourage anyone that has questions for today's call to please submit them now using the blue ch thought bubble at the bottom of your screen, the chat icon, and just please include your name as well as your media outlet. Before we get into questions, I did want to make one clarification. I believe Secretary Oleksiak may have had a typo in his notes. The UC trust fund balance is currently $344 million, million with an M. So that is it for the updates, and let's get into questions. First, Thank we you, have Trump. Lauren, sure. First, we have Lauren Rosenblatt from Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. How many people have already applied for the Lost Wages Assistance Program? And when do you anticipate you will apply for more funding from FEMA for claims filed in September? I don't have that number. That's a number that uh, uh, people are doing that as we speak. So that number is is uh, growing. Uh, when we can get uh, a number, we will get that for you. And uh, we will apply as we need to apply. We are aware that uh, we uh, have five weeks worth initially we had three weeks worth of, of funding that had been approved. The grant was extended to five weeks. Uh, we're watching that closely and uh, uh, we'll, we'll uh, apply as necessary. I'm not quite sure what, what the um, uh, parameters are that we need to follow, but we will follow them and, and do what we can to, to get every dollar we can get for Pennsylvania. Next, we have Joe Chevalier of the Bucks County Courier Times. What do you mean that the grant was, was for five weeks and now extended? I'm sorry, it was for three weeks. The initial grant that we received was the 1.5 billion for three weeks. That has been increased to, I think, 2.4 billion for five weeks. So we are able to, um, instead of um, just knowing that we had dollars for five weeks worth of back claims, we now know we have uh, the funding for five weeks worth of, of back claims, the first through the 29th. 
Okay, do we have any additional questions at this time? Secretary Oleksiak, you may have a light day today. We will give it a couple more moments and we'll see if we have any additional questions or any follow ups. Uh, Joe does have a follow up, so she wants to clarify. You originally said that we had received 1.5 billion for retroactive claims. And just to clarify, we now have 2.5 billion for five weeks, correct? I believe it's 2.4 billion, but we can get the exact number for you. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, I know uh, Susan comes with a lot of uh, more specific in the weeds information and uh, I, I do miss my uh, buddy today, but I hope this has been helpful for you. Okay, if we have no additional questions, we're going to wrap the call at this time. Again, if anyone has any questions for the comms office, please reach out to us at dlipress at pa.gov and we will get that information for you this afternoon. We do have one more that just came in. Joe Napsha from the Tribune Review asks, for workers who were jobless before COVID-19 and are unemployed because of COVID-19, are they eligible for, and Joe, it doesn't look like I have the remainder of your question. Are they eligible for, is it the lost wages assistance program? Is that what you're asking about? All right, we'll give Joe a second to provide us with the rest of that information, and we'll move on to Michaela, Michaela Draypack from ABC 27. Do you have an update on plans to hire more UC staff? Uh, we have, uh, as I mentioned last week, uh, uh, more than uh, doubled our staff since March 15th. That number has been con uh, consistent uh, with last week right now. Uh, we are working with the governor's office to see what uh, Funding we may have available. We are bringing in an outside consulting group that is going to look to see what uh, we can do to help with uh, current staffing and future staffing. So right now we are are uh, we, we're making a lot of progress as well on uh, the, the backdating and the or not the backdating the older claims and uh, older emails and uh, our, our phone call time is, is dropping. So the extra staff that we have hired is beginning to. Uh, make a difference, beginning to show some real uh, uh, positive uh, growth as far as uh, less wait time, more calls being answered per week, more emails being responded to per week. So we, we are we're looking at that all the time. What do we need to do to improve the customer service? Uh, because as I've said, uh, if, if you're not on the right side of the statistics, that doesn't really help you. And we wanna do all we can to make sure that uh, the, the people who have not gotten their dollars yet do get their the benefits they're entitled to. Okay, now we have a clarification from Joe Napsha from the Tribune Review, and he wants to know, for workers who were jobless before COVID-19 and are unemployed because of COVID-19, are they eligible for the $300 checks? And he's referring specifically to the lost wage assistance program. Uh, that, that list that I uh, uh, provided, if they are uh, currently receiving unemployment, uh, regular traditional unemployment, or through the PUA program, the uh, non-traditional, uh, program, then uh, they would be eligible. Okay, Joe Chevalier has an additional follow up in reference to the lost wages assistance program. To clarify again, can Pennsylvania continue to receive the three hundred dollar extra payment funding until the forty four billion is exhausted or the PA allotment is exhausted? How does that work, Secretary? We have to reapply that. That forty four billion dollars is for the entire country. When states have uh, used their initial grant from that, then they do need to reapply uh, to uh, tap into whatever resources may be available for them. And again, the program will will end when those that 44 billion is gone uh, by uh, the end of the calendar year, December 27th, I believe, or if uh, Congress and the president agree on a uh, different kind of uh, approach to supplemental benefits. So we, we okay. do have to reapply and we will. Michaela Draypack from ABC 27 asks, do we have an update on the upgrade to our computer system that's set to happen in October? We are, are still in the process of uh, working through that. We anticipate that we will be going live in October, but as, as you are aware, we've, we've gone through a lot of uh, 
things in, in the meantime. So we are working uh, pandemic, obviously, the PUA program, uh, now the Lost Wages Act, the fraud issue. Uh, they've all had an impact on on uh, getting ready for uh, the, the new uh, benefits modernization system that we have. As of now, we are still uh, ready to go live, but we are in consultation with our and my advisory committee with our vendor, with our staff, with the uh, with the governor's office to determine if that is uh, the direction we we will go. Okay, Secretary Alexiak, that looks like all the questions we have for today. Do you have any additional comments or information that you want to share with our reporters? I appreciate uh, uh, having the opportunity to answer the questions. Look forward to. Uh, um, getting that $300 into the hands of people that need it, and uh, we'll continue to keep you updated as things uh, evolve. And that is all the time we have for today. Again, please email our communications office at dlipress 